A religion has typically an agreed theology, something about God. But it's not the something about God that counts, it's the agreement. I don't have that. I mean the agreement. I do have that it's about God. But it's your God. And your God is unique, as indeed you are. In fact, my ideal is that you and your God have identical values, which enables you to unquestionably love your God with your heart, soul, mind and strength. It doesn't mean you would choose to, but you could. And you could find out what the consequence of doing such is. And to do such, you could, of course, think on whatsoever is good and lovely. Which might well cause you to want to thank God for such. And indeed to seek to trust that your God does exist. And if you get good feedback from this, you will carry on in this path. And I feel it would be rational to do so. I also anticipate that over the course of time, several such people doing such individually do come to a singularity of God. And perhaps that is the true God. And we would be trusting such. Is this approach a religion? Well, it's got something about God in it. But it hasn't built temples and priesthoods and hierarchy. hasn't actually told you what the moral principles are either. They're probably the principles of your culture and society because that's what you've been brought up to value. And if living by such valuation causes you to think otherwise, then you will. And your view of God will adjust your view of God. The only God that you could love will adjust accordingly. I mean, the only God you could love completely, by definition, is the one that has the same values that you value. And I've said nothing about heaven and hell. I've actually said nothing about some afterlife, although you might well feel that your values imply such. Fine. What's the problem? Well, I think the problem is that we might not be tolerant of other people's personal view of God. Yes, I suppose birds of a feather will flock together and avoid those that are not of the same feather, I suppose. But perhaps they'll value harmony and peacefulness and concern of others, love of others. So perhaps they'll overcome the differences. I don't mean conform to each other, but I do mean harmonize with each other. And that's what I would tend to expect. I don't mean that it's to be imposed upon each other. I mean, I haven't given some definitive blueprint for society. In fact, I suppose I've assumed that the individual, from the individual's point of view, is stuck with the society he's got. Well, unless he can literally move to another one that he prefers. So I'm convinced I'm not religious. 
But I personally do trust in my God. I choose to trust. And by my God, I mean a God whose values, if you like, are what my values are. As far as I know, and that changes with time and experience, as far as I know. Well, I'm tempted to say that there's nothing else to be said. <laughs> but you might think that's absurd for someone who's said so much in the past. I think what I mean is, in some sense, it distinguishes and summarizes what I'm very concerned about. I'm not at all happy with religions, and sometimes I think they're not actually better than nothing. And other times I think, oh, of course they are. They produce some wonderful people. Let's focus on that. But there is the cost of all the disappointments that religion, religions generally have brought to the world. So I feel it's best not to invest too much in religion, but to love your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Your God seems almost tautologically to be true. Valid. The only way you can go. It's just that we might not be singularly realizing such, but instead handicapped with whatever's been imposed upon us. And perhaps it's not so imposed upon us. We have a greater freedom than, than we might have thought. When I say free, I know it's a bit ambiguous what we mean by freedom. I do mean free from external constraint to be what you want to be. Because what you want to be may not be in your best interest. But I gather you need to find out. And that is what would be a progress then towards adjusting to what is truly in your best interest. And I choose to trust that ultimately that will lead you to wonderful harmony with each other and great blessing. Is it a hope? Yes. Am I certain about it? No. But I am clear that it's the best way to go. What do you think? Bless you. Thank you, Heavenly Dad. There is much advice, literature and teaching available to be found, but there's much uncertainty. There's always uncertainty as to whether what you're hearing is true, is valid, will work, or if it's been tampered with or wasn't good in the first place. And very often it's good and bad laced together, valid and invalid. Some things are right and some things aren't. Uncertainty abounds. So I think that means you're left with trust. What can you trust? Well, you can trust all sorts of things. 
but it's thought that to trust in your God is possibly the best thing to do. Not for certain, <laughs> but possibly. To be sure in yourself, you'll only know if you taste and see. But then that's true of every possibility that presents itself to you. You'll only be convinced, I suppose, I mean, if you find that you apply it and it works. It's safest to believe in what you value. I'm not sure if you'd want to do anything else, would you? I mean, to put your trust in something that you don't value. That's a sort of lacking a certain dynamism, isn't it? It's almost a contradiction, isn't it? Do we deliberately pursue the second best? Only out of fear or duress. Or sheer irrationality, of course. Come back to where I started. It's that essence of agreement that seems to be paramount in religion. The disagreement, which constitutes some sort of organisation, seems to cause endless trouble. So we tend to gather together in groups that are in some sort of workable agreement. Suppose, therefore, I'm arguing that, especially if we've come from similar sort of backgrounds, we're likely to have similar values in large measure and some caucus of agreement and perhaps we will quickly adjust our values that the agreement is greater. Thank you, Dad. Well, this may seem very bare because I haven't fleshed out um, what you value. What do you value? I think uh, people tend to value very similar things, they value joy and peace and hope and assurance, um, love and kindness, um, goodness, or what used to be called charity, I suppose, where you just give for the joy of knowing that you're blessing someone. I personally think this is common, common, to mankind, whether it's sort of in some sense genetically, spiritually innate in him, um, I suspect it is by now. Um, we blossom and flourish in loving kindness, and we see this in the way we attempt to um, care for our children. Um, it's a bit myopic, we focus on our children uh, narrowly, um, but uh, it's a great blessing to do this for the child compared to where the child doesn't receive such love and care. So it looks as though we're going to have this in common and and therefore be rather understanding of why others do it, because we want to do it ourselves. We have a common value. Um, how does this sort of situation stack up in a world of scarcity? Well, 
I think loving kindness overcomes the distribution problem in a sense. That's an odd thing for a, an economist to say, isn't it? Because he's used models always of self-interest. But I'm saying that enlightened self-interest is extremely loving and charitable and not lacking motivation because of it, but on the contrary, driven by it, that love and compassion drives me to help and, if you like, take part in production, that aspect of production that I, I can do to help and be a blessing because that's my joy, because I have received from the moment of birth and probably long before I have received without giving back and gratitude overcomes me, powers me through life, makes every day worth getting up for, to be in the joy of community kindness to others, help, blessing. Appreciated, yes. Tremendous self, but a loving self. Not the annihilation of self, you see, but a loving, active, motivated self. The love of one's God. The personification of your own values but values that mature with the experience of time and the loveliness of others. It's a utopia, it's a heaven, and I believe it's to hand. And I can say I have found that you can enter into it unilaterally, you make a decision. This is what I value. This is what I want to pursue. And I do. And uh, my reward is assurance, joy, peace, mind, great purpose, compassion, loyalty, creativity and love. In short, what I think most people value. Personified in my God. Our God, perhaps, with the passage of time. How could it not be? Thank you, wonderful one. Dearest friend, thank you, Dad. Heavenly Dad. Love you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>